Australia's first euthanasia clinic has opened in Adelaide and police there are keeping a close eye on how it's run. It was founded by right to die pioneer Dr Philip Nitschke, widely known as Dr Death, after the defeat of several attempts to legalise euthanasia in New South Wales, Tasmania and South Australia. The police say Dr Nitschke is not breaking any laws, but his new clinic has its opponents. Alex Mann's been speaking to Philip Nitschke and his first clients for this report. On the streets of the affluent Adelaide suburb of Walkerville, there's a new couple on the block. But it's not the stylish bikes that have the neighbours intrigued. Dr Philip Nitschke is the founder of the voluntary euthanasia advocacy organisation Exit International. And now he, his wife Fiona and Exit call this suburb home. And if you dream to be free, I can take you there, just follow me. Well, Exit International has acquired a place where we can now coordinate many of the services, euthanasia services, that we uh, offer and many people have an interest in around Australia and, in fact, overseas. Australia's first euthanasia clinic treads a fine line between what's legal and what's not. We're anxious about uh, making sure that we don't, uh, we're not in breach of the law. It is a grey area it's though, isn't it? Very. It is a grey area. And uh, we've been in that grey area for some 18 years now. His euthanasia handbook has been banned in Australia. His office has equipment used for testing banned euthanasia drugs. And his company, Max Dog Brewing, has its nitrogen canisters stacked openly against the walls. The gas is ostensibly for use by home brewing enthusiasts, but his clients often have other ideas. Have you sold these to people who have used them to end their lives? Yes, we've sold them to a lot of people, and some people have used them to end their lives, yes. How many? I would know of about 20 people that have used these cylinders to end their lives, yeah. I mean, how many 75-year-olds uh, on their deathbed are home brewing in the meantime? <laughs> the motto of the company is dispense or dispose, uh, if you see what I'm getting at. At a palliative care centre on the other side of town, 53-year-old Deborah Smith is close to death. She's waiting on Dr Nitschke's advice. Go slow. You go around that way. All right. Deborah Smith's body is riddled with cancer that began in her breasts 10 years ago and has now spread throughout her body. What sort of advice do you hope to receive from him, I guess, in terms of what you can do? Hope, to me, hope is euthanasia. Deborah Smith's daughters, Karina and Haley, have put their lives on hold to help with her care. We help her to the toilet and we, um, we get her bed, bath, bed baths and ice chips. It's been eight weeks since Deborah Smith has eaten any food. Last week, she rolled over in bed and broke a rib. Now she survives on a diet of painkillers and crushed ice. I would sign a form tomorrow. I would sign a form right now and go sleep tonight. I wouldn't waste another minute. You would like life to end? Yes, I would love life to end. While Deborah herself is too sick to leave the hospice, her daughters and aunt are among the first clients to visit Philip Nitschke's new clinic. Uh, if she had something to end her life, would she take it? Absolutely. If she had it today, would, when would she take it? Well, she doesn't want to have suicide written on her death certificate. No. So if she could do it legally, she would do yes. it. But she also wants to go peacefully. This year, proposed legislation to legalise euthanasia has failed in New South Wales, Tasmania and South Australia. Philip Nitschke says it's just creating more demand for his services. We've watched these attempts in the various state parliaments around the nation fail one after the other. And it's in the context of failure after failure that more and more elderly people are saying, look, I can't wait around for laws. I want to know what I can do for my own personal strategy. Now Philip Nitschke's reach extends far from his Adelaide base. Hello, Dr Nitschke. Oh, hello, Jacqueline. How are you? Jacqueline Meredith lives on Sydney's Lower North Shore. She's 81 and has a terminal lung disease. I don't want to die. I'm happy. I'm leading a good, full life. She's managed to illegally get her hands on some Nembutal, a powerful sedative that she says, when the time's right, 
she'll take to end her life. It's a very simple drug to take. You'll just have to mix it with water and take it as a drink. Uh, but the idea that uh, having someone present could actually implicate them in some way is a concern. Philip Nitschke knows he's walking a legal tightrope. 7.30 has seen correspondence from police in New South Wales and Queensland sent to Dr Nitschke after his Max Dog brewing cylinders were found next to bodies in both states. Dr Nitschke's lawyers advised him not to respond to the emails. Most recently in the last uh, day or two I've had contact with New South Wales Police asking me whether or not I was aware of a certain individual who had made use of a nitrogen cylinder to end their lives and uh, as I said we cooperate in every way. Police in South Australia are keeping a close eye on his activities. We'll make contact with Mr Nitschke where we need, we need to make contact so uh, we'll monitor it and we won't take our eye off it but uh, at this stage there is no police action. So he's operating in a bit of a grey area here isn't he? Yeah, possibly in a grey area, but um, as I said, there are no breaches of the law, so it's not a police matter at this time. I think he actually acknowledges that he's operating in a grey area. Um, I think what we're seeing is a little bit of a push against that. Um, it could be considered to be, in some respects, I suppose, a sort of a catch-me-if-you-can scenario. I think this, is, this should be a matter of public scrutiny. Currently, we only have effectively somebody's word that, that perhaps everybody that receives this information is, in fact critically ill. There's nothing to be gained from running around giving people that are of unsound mind uh, access to dangerous information or drugs or the like. I mean, people say this could happen, but the reality is that it almost never happens. The people I'm talking to have thought through the issues. They've come to the decision that they want to know more about this choice. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so that's what we'll base it on. The end that Deborah Smith was hoping for came on Sunday, two days after 7.30's interview, she died. After the family took advice from Dr Nitschke and persuaded the hospital to increase her pain relief to a level known as terminal sedation. She was always very spontaneous, the life of the party, very bubbly personality. No one could be upset around mum. And that's obviously why it was so hard to watch the deterioration, um, because it wasn't her at all. She wishes they'd had the discussion earlier. I don't think I'd be in such turmoil now. I think it's not so much the grief that's troubling me as much as watching what she went through. Alex Mann reporting.